Welcome to Being Humankind, with your hosts Brian, Mike, and Neely. We explore what it means to be human in a time of disconnection. What has been your greatest accomplishment so far? <clears throat> wow. My greatest accomplishment... Getting an opportunity to be a dad, not just a father, but a dad. That to me, you know, and I, you know, you, you, you had no one, there's, there's no manual when you get married, you know, to tell you, you know, how to do this and how to do that. And you, you, you work through things and you, you grow. <clears throat> a good friend of mine, he talked about how if you want to quicken your evolution, you know, get married <laughs> you want to quicken your evolution get married if you want to quicken it even further have children <laughs> you know and i must say you know being a father and then becoming a dad two totally different experiences qualitatively different but i think that has a lot to do with the woman that i'm you know my wife and that we met because of TM. So there was a foundation that was there in terms of an understanding of consciousness and appreciation of this technique. And we ultimately became TM teachers together as well. And so that's made it, for want of a better way of saying it, easier. But having this opportunity to, to be a dad versus merely being a father. So that's uh, that's how I'd answer that question. And I've had some great experiences. I'm thankful for, for all of my experiences. And I need to say this, this is important. And I think we get so often caught up in our prior lives, going back to Ernest Holmes' work and never limit your view of life by any past experience, that we get so caught up in our prior experiences that we become paralyzed. And you, you don't wanna move forward. I love what Stephen Colby once told me. He said, you want to live, love, learn, and leave a legacy. Live, love, learn, and leave a legacy. And so for me, getting an opportunity to be a dad, not just a father, has been one of my greatest joys, un unquestionably, unquestionably, unquestionably. So I think we're fortunate because I, I finally have a follow-up question. <laughs> um, and, and maybe it might sound silly, but I think a lot of people have different views on what being a dad is, mm. right? Mm. Everyone, every, well, not every male, but most men know how to be a father. Mm -hmm. um, how would you define your way of being a dad? A really good question. I'll answer it this way. My mom and dad gave us a solid foundation, a solid foundation in knowing how to take care of ourselves, be it cooking, cleaning a home, um, taking care of a yard. I mean, being okay with trying to figure things out, giving us a good foundation, giving us boundaries, you know, in terms of what not to do. And that foundation, we, me and my siblings, my siblings and I, we've built upon it. And so getting an opportunity to be a dad for me is, for want of a better way of saying it, transmitting the good things I experienced as a child to the next generation. I said to our daughter the other day that, you know, she was trying to outthink me on something. And I told her, I said, one day you'll be smarter than me. I want you to be smarter than me. You have to be smarter than me. She said, but how, you know so much. I said, Chloe, every generation's responsibility is to be smarter than the prior generation. That's, how, that's evolution in action. And those who try to truncate that process, the short, circuit that process, they're dooming themselves to failure in the long run as a species. 
every generation should be better. We should encourage our children to be smarter than us. And getting an opportunity to make sure that this young lady would be smarter than my wife and I, our son would be smarter than the both of us, that to me is important. And that starts with giving them that foundation, that Vedic phrase that talks about how the first half of your life, you are making your habits. The second half of your life, your habits are making you. So being a dad is to give them the habits that are gonna create the best them and have them be better than we are. Thank you, that was an incredible answer. So putting those two things together, looking ahead to when you and I are sitting in rocking chairs, <laughs> having similar conversations, what does the legacy look like in your children that, you know, the, what do you picture it as? A strong sense of self, not allowing social constructs to dictate to them how they should or shouldn't be. Belief in their capacity, humility to recognize that it's native within everyone, that we're in the universe. I cannot stress that enough. We are in the universe. And all social constructs began as an idea within someone's mind with an end in mind. And to interrogate them and understand the end that has been created and not fall prey to the false thinking of, again, impossibility, but yet believing that I'm possible. I can do this. That strong sense of self. Because at that point, whether they choose to teach, whether they choose to be a business owner, whether they choose to, whatever the musician, whatever they choose to do, that core is the foundation, that sense of self. But having a strong, a strong ethic of understanding, of compassion, of humility, and just move forward and not brooking nonsense. Because at the end of the day, there will be people who will attempt to test you in terms of how you choose to be in the world because they themselves don't know themselves. I, I can forgive them because they don't know themselves. And as a result of not knowing themselves, they don't believe that you can or should be where you are and or do what it is that you're doing. I can forgive them because they don't know. The person for whom I'm a little less forgiving, if you will, would be the person who understands the mind and seeks to give you an idea upon which to gnaw, so much so that you effectively remove yourself from the field of competition, that you choose to slink off into the dark shadows, never to be seen again. Once you understand the brain and the mind, and that everything is a function of an idea, you can't think that way anymore. That's liberating. And that's what I believe, you know, I, I, what we would be talking about when we're old men, old men, you know, making sure that our children and others with whom we've come into contact have at least gained a seed of that understanding. Now, whether they, you know, build upon it in the moment that you give it to them, it's another question, but at least they have a seed and as long as it doesn't fall on fallow ground, it falls on fertile soil, at some point it'll take root. And at some point it'll sprout. And at some point it'll bear some fruit.